dev time again it's gonna be a little bit of a short stream again today I've got some things to do before before I go to bed but I wanted to come in show the new code off start a new project simpler one so let's get stuck in hopefully you can read the title but if not Rock, paper, scissors. Much, much more simple than a um, platformer, of course. And um, I've had a bit of fun doing this one. It's, just, it's nice to be not completely stuck every line of code. <laughs> so, this is all our boilerplate normally. We always have this, yeah. So I'm not going to spend too much time discussing that bit of the code we then enter into the game.asm <clears throat> that's like our top layer of code in the game so we've got main 
all it really does is react with interact with the game class here is where we initialize the game and again it's the same virtually every time maybe a few changes here and there to um the layer ordering and stuff <laughs> of course for this game we don't need a tile map or anything like that and in fact we've only got four sprites four whole patterns and that's it four patterns so yeah that sets up our windows you know um different ula screen and how what layer they're going to be in what is the color of the transparency uh this just opens our, our um slot and page where our sprites are sitting in the ram and it uploads it to the um to the screen to the sprite hardware using that loop there all simple stuff so far that we've done before note that i'm calling new match that's something i've written for this game we'll look at that in a minute <clears throat> this is to, this uses the random register i don't really understand it heavily but i've just called it here for no reason other than to ensure that it constantly changes so that if you sit there for two seconds it'll be different to one second you know um, when you actually finally get that value when you need it if you didn't have that there you'll find the way the rest of the code works it gets the same numbers every time you play the game so this stops that from happening <clears throat> then simple stuff again we're doing that weight raster line one day we'll write a different version of that or have a closer look at it here just caches the key chip presses here does our frame counter which we're not actually using this time around in fact let's delete let's delete that don't really need it <laughs> don't even need a game drawer anymore and the reason being this game is so simple that uh, we don't even need a draw an update really. Everything's trigger based. But I do have an update loop just for some countdowns and stuff like that so that it can s stay on a certain screen for a f few seconds or whatever. So yeah, all simple stuff that we've seen before so far. UI, again, is stuff we've seen in fact we're not using this ui i had that as a reference in my code hud is what i called this one but it's the same thing but much smaller version note how i'm getting the length of the string there minus one because we got this zero to signify the end and the reason i wanted the length of the string was so that i could calculate halfway through and center the text in the screen which you'll see done here. Um, show message probably is it. Hello, Micro. How you doing, my man? I went for a right change of pace here and gone to a much easier project that I wrote overnight. <clears throat> and it pretty much is finished actually so we could either add some polish to this or do something different but yeah so that just is a really unoptimal way of clearing the fonts that i just wrote myself using the pot plot tile it's a very unefficient way i think but it doesn't matter it doesn't happen very often this here we're gonna have to look at I've called it Wait Hackaroo, so I can't miss it and forget about it. But I have to do this what Wait Raster line. Look how much I'm doing it. If that makes any sense to you, that's like the maximum amount of frames. It's supposed to be 65,000 frames of the TV signal. 
but it's not. I've had to do that just to give like a short delay. So that's confusing the hell out of me. But other than that, there's nothing here that confuses me. Just that. Um, I've started to try and make some cleaner routines. You'll know I put this breakpoint here. We don't ever want to see that. That's just because I didn't put a return. So I want it to break if we get there. There should be no reason for it to ever happen. Although there is another type of state, which is choosing. So you can either be choosing rock, paper or scissors. Which you can see up here. Uh, here. <coughs> Yeah, play a top, because I, if, originally I made this, I was writing this game thinking we'll uh, make it one or two players. And I started out by making it one player, but with that in mind. And as I wrote it, I thought to myself, not many people are going to want to play this game two player. It's pretty stupid. I mean, unless you literally don't have fingers or something, you know. Um, I can't think of any other reason why you wouldn't just play it in real life with, with your actual hands. So I ended up making it just one player. It was just for fun. Like the intention of this project was to... Um, if you imagine we had like an adventure game or something, maybe you have to beat some guy three times at, at uh, rock, paper, scissors, you know, to win an award or something like that. Or to get an item off him. So that it'd be something like that. Like a little mini game or maybe some sort of open world thing where you can go and do different things. This would be one of the things you could go and do. Uh, what else is there to explain about this? Because most of it's pretty standard, but it is quite optimal, some of it. Like I've got these constants for the attributes, except for attribute three. They're changeable. That's where the pattern is. So obviously we need to change that sometimes. The draw hands is very similar. Again, it's just a standard draw routine that we've done before. Except for this time there's two sprites in there. You'll note that I magnify. This is attribute four and that's full magnification. So um, even though they're just one pattern, which I showed a minute ago, they're just one pattern each for rock and then paper and so on. That actually takes up half of a screen, just one pattern, because it's multiplied by eight by doing this. Each one of them uh, is X and Y for two of them, each, like the pair. And if they're both set like that, that's actually 8x magnification. <coughs> so their position, therefore, forget that, that's the actual score. But the position you'll see is wherever it is. I can't actually see where it is, but it's zero and then halfway down the screen. Uh, where is that? <laughs> Could have sworn I... <coughs> they have, they both share an X position, so there's their X position that they share. I'm trying to find where their Y is. Oh, look, I've just hard-coded the Y. So that's zero. And then here's the other one.
which you'll notice is actually halfway up the screen. It's very nice the way this is set up because there's no update loop. It's purely triggered by events happening in the code, you know, in the game. Um, let's just run it and have a look. So I've got fonts in there and everything. I press P for paper, S for scissors, and R for rock. I seem to only win the match. By the way, first of three wins. But I only ever win if I just do paper every time. I've noticed. There we go. I've won one. Okay, that wasn't a great example because I done all he done all three rock. But did you see how it gave me a winning screen and now it's reset? It's ready to play again. He's winning now. Oh, I'm having a comeback. No, he won. And there you go. And then it ends, starts over again. <clears throat> it's actually quite fun and looks pretty cool just for seeing it, the amount of uh, time it took to knock together. So I'm trying to think of how to examine this or, or progress it. I call that really horrible clear screen fonts. So that just clears every every possible f um, cell with a blank space. Set the score to zero for both and call initialize new turn. Of course I could have just left that blank. Uh, I mean, not had them two lines. So when we initialize the new term, we set both characters to be choosing state and attribute. The attribute is basically the pattern. It's going to set you back to that pre-mode where you can only see part of the fist. <clears throat> Excuse me. Here we're setting the bool to be false as well to say that we haven't chosen. And then we call draw hands. So note how this is only happening one time, you know. Then it sits there for as long as you it waits for you to press a button, it doesn't draw anything. Excuse me. Here's where I'm centering the screen, the um, the font. So I've got string go, that's the actual string. Then we get its length halved. When we go to show message, that takes away half of the uh, half of the length of the string. Stores it there. So I should probably put that there. Yeah, so it's really simple. The only thing that really confuses me is why do I have to put such massive numbers in, in this? Look at that weight routine. Really... I should be able to just put 50 in there, 50, and call this once, and that should be one second. It must be in like microseconds or something. I don't know. It's certainly something I need to look into, but I think the way to do that is to write my own version of these from scratch so that I understand it. Not the weight plus raster, but. It calls weight raster line, which is here, written by Emuk. 
and that I don't understand like every single line of that like I don't know what what it's doing and why <coughs> I've just been using that so far. Now, if you remember, we had an update loop every other time. We've always had this game update, and we ha always have this here. But that's really not necessary here. Hmm. Well, yeah, it's it might be necessary, but it's not going to affect our wait time. The reason being, we're stuck in this loop here. It's never ever going to get back to there to wait until we finish waiting all these. And if we didn't have these weights, it would just fly straight through. It wouldn't care about the wait time on the update loop. So yes, yeah, it's, it's already pretty much done. I don't know what else to do with it actually. I kind of like how the sprites look they're really bulky with that magnification up. I think that could be really cool. Odd name in the routine. This hackeroo. <laughs> Is that what you mean? Oh yeah, I've seen that. I've se I have noticed that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't actually write it. I just, you know, just thought might as well leave it. There must be some more robust way of doing that, though. There must be. I mean, the naming thing, um, perhaps, yeah, it's just a typo, isn't it, I think. Ah. <sighs> Well, I mean, that was a quick look at that anyway. I've had, I've been bubbling few uh, f around with a few ideas about the next game. <clears throat> I was quite happy at how long this didn't take me very long at all to get the bulk of this done. Maybe an hour or so, but then um, it took me like a couple of hours sorting out the HUD. And, you know, that's not to mention that all these were pre-written, these things I'm using. Hmm. I guess I could take a look at trying to add sound to this. A background would be quite nice as well. Thing is, the um the font is using layer two, I believe. Well, I know it is. How can I show that though? Well, for example, this this says layer two access port here in the in the plot tile routine. So that kind of indicates it. <coughs> Not just that, I know it was because when you set the layer order, I had to set the layer 2 to be on the top so that we could see the font. Uh, so I don't know how to do a background. Like I was thinking of doing, like we could do a, a nice bitmap background. Of a table or something, you know, but
don't know if that would be allowed with what we're doing here. I mean, perhaps we could start a new game. What I've kind of done here is I've written rockpaper.asm, so it's intended as a mini game. You know, it's like I could quite easily write another game inside this game. And then we could set the game manager. We could to choose what mini game we want or whatever, you know. We only use such little space. <coughs> With the sprites, I mean. Yeah, I've lost, lost focus a little bit. It's remarkably simple, this game. Hmm. <laughs> Completely out of ideas suddenly. I guess that's what happens when you make a simple game like this. There's not that much I could add. We're actually on to like the polish stage already, aren't we? Which is hard work. Like for example, we could make some bigger fonts. Could add sound. Um currently the font only seems to fill the inner screen, you can't go beyond that to the right. It's, it's already at its limit. Uh, of course, you could always have better graphics, but it's hard. They're only in 16 by 16 pixels. It's hard to draw hands in that size. I like it, though. I like it. I'm kind of tempted to just start a fresh project right now live. Something like um, it would end up as something like fight or final fight. But, um, you know, to start with, we'll just have literally the character and try and make him punch and then... Um, make an enemy which we can punch you know that would be about as far as i'd get probably but we could always we've done scrolling before so once we've done that we you know we can obviously try and link the two projects together make a new one linking the two yes i think what i'll do is uh end the stream just temporarily so that i've got this separate because this is just Done really. I don't think there's much I can do on the rock, paper, scissors um, to make it a, a lot better. Not without getting really into it. And then when I come back, I'm going to try it with lower set it, uh, the stream with a lower buffer because I think there's like a 10 second buffer at the moment or something. It makes chatting harder. So um, I'll try and reduce that to like two seconds or something and see, see whether it handles it. But. I'll be back in just a few moments. See you in a moment. 